to Dream It, Dare It, Do It, Live the Life You Want. This is Jasmine Bote and my friend Anna. Hi, Anna. Hello, Jasmine. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really happy to talk to you today. <laughs> yeah, me too. We're going to have fun. Guys, I want you to know Anna was in Super Coach Academy with me. That's where we met. <laughs> I remember so, uh, people, but because people listening to me are probably going, Jasmine went through the whole academy. She, I invited <laughs> everybody coming, so everybody knows what Super Coach Academy is. But Anna, besides being a Super Coach, what are you like? Where are you? You live in California. I live in Oakland, California. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're you're like I look at your bio, which I'm going to put in the in the description a little, you know, when I post the episode, but you're, you were a business lady. I was for uh, 20 something years. I worked in corporate America. I was in sales um, in technology sales and long like telecom. Okay. Uh, I did a little bit of startup and video conference, like this thing we're doing right now. I did 25 years ago when it was um, a big box. And you just had to have the codec, and the codec was like a half million dollars. Oh, and that was the I was 25 years ago. I was at the beginning of this thing we're doing now. I see. So now you've seen the uh, you've seen the evolution of it, and how yeah. now <laughs> now you literally just download an app on your phone. <laughs> that crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Like I I just love technology. I personally I'm a technology lover. <laughs> oh, I be told I'm not. <laughs> well, I know there's a lot of people who who are not, and that's why I'm around because I get people to like it, and uh, maybe not love it, but they they get to like it once I'm finished with them. <laughs> so, Anna, uh, my podcast, as you know, is called Dream It, Dare It, Do It, Live the Life You Want, and so. I, I like to talk to people about, you know, if they're living the life they want, and if they ever thought that, you know, they'd be living the life they're living right now, you know, years ago. So, you know, considering that 25 years ago, you were working with that big, huge machine, and that now you're just sitting in your room in front of your laptop, like, what have you seen in living the life you want in that respect? I, um, it's a great question. I have to, um, I feel really blessed because I am living the life I want. Mm. I, when I was in corporate America, I was a working mother and I was the only, at that point, I was really the only working mother. They're all men, and I was the only female in sales at that time. And um, I remember coming home from a president's club, and um, it was, or not even that, I think it was just a sales meeting. And I, went, I was picking up my son, and there was an accident on the Bay Bridge, and we were late. And I had one of those big cell phones, like one of the first ones. And I just was sobbing because I'm like, how do I make it work where I take care of my son, take care of my family and have a business? And it didn't look, I couldn't see a way in corporate America because mm. I was a working mother. And so I thought I'm gonna start my own thing. I'm gonna start my own business. And to have it and being able to pay the bills and be able to work out and have a good relationship with my children. It's kind of like I did have it all. Maybe it's not as big as I thought it would be, but. I have a good life, really. Yeah. Good. It's so funny that, that that you say that. Like I, we have these these grandeur ideas. Like you know, I want it to be like this, you know. And then when I'm there, <laughs> I will be, you know, it'll be it. But my experience and what I'm hearing in you is you know, the grandeur is really not necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm good. I'm good yeah. with what I have. Yeah. I can think I want a lot more. Yeah. But I noticed that even when I get it, I'm never satisfied because <laughs> then it's the next thing comes in. It's like the trash. Yeah. When I 
trash it fills up. Mm. But it's been a really, I think for um, very few women, especially my age, because I'm almost 60, my generation, like we were the first women going into the workforce. There are few people older than me, but very few. Mm. To have designed a life where I I saw how to do have it all. Yeah, have it all. Have what I wanted, my all. Yeah. What was yeah. It, what I wanted. Yeah, I often say in in these um in 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 the podcast, I, I often explain that when I when I first got out of school, you know, my my goal was I'm gonna have a business card. I'm going to just go get myself a business card. Do you know how many business cards I've had? <laughs> like, like it was like the, the be all and end all. I'm going to have a business card. I think it took like four years for me to get a business card, you know, because I was sales coordinator by then, you know, and. And it was just like. My my why did I want a business card <laughs> you know it's like it was kind of like and and I saw that you know I I was emulating my father mm. you know when I I first when I was younger I was um I wanted to get married so mm. at 15 I had a boyfriend at 19 I was engaged wow. and at 22 I left him because I had an epiphany that I was unhappy. <laughs> it's like, why am I doing this again? You know, and I'm like, why? And I saw that I was emulate, emulating mom. Because in my mind, it was like, when I turn 28, I'm going to be married and I'm going to have three kids. And at 22, I kind of woke up and went, wait, what? Wow. <laughs> you know, and then, but then, thinking I'm not going to emulate mom, I'm going to go in the business world. So then I went into the business world and then I, I emulated dad for 10 years, you know? And then when I got out of there, I, and I remember when I quit my job, I didn't have any other income. I just like, I'm quitting. I can't stand this. I'm, I'm done. I'm like, I'm not going to be angry. I'd rather live in the streets than be angry like this all the time. That was like how bad it was. Obviously, I didn't, I don't, I have no idea what it is to live in the street because I've been, you know, very privileged. Um, <clears throat> but then I started my own thing. And I've been, you know, it's been 25 years that, you know, I've been wow. doing my thing. Just, yeah, it's not a big, you know, Fortune 500 company, but I'm living the life I want. Well, I think, you know, that's the thing is, is I think what I've seen, Jasmine, is that most people, what you just said was um, it was profound because most people, we just live automatically, like what our culture says, like those are the cultural stereotypes. Yeah. But then when we get really quiet, like our soul, something deep in us wants something. Yeah. But we got to listen not to the, the noise in our head or the automatic, but kind of the longing. Um, and I think that's what's profound is to listen to the, like almost like listening to the pain. The pain is saying you're on, you're on the wrong track. Like when I was sobbing because I wasn't going to get to my son in time, I knew what I was doing wasn't right for me. Mm. That was the gift. You now our pain, when we're unhappy, it's like, oh, no, you're not doing what you're here to do. Pay attention to the pain. I wonder where, where, like, I wonder who made up <laughs> that, you know, you had to suffer. Like, do you know the no pain, no gain thing? Yeah. Like that, you know, that makes me throw up a little bit in my mouth, the no pain, no gain thing. I'm kind of like, what? I think that there's, there's a moment, there's this exercise that I do. It, and it's like, my mind has a certain limit. And it's this slow, it's called a slow exercise. And you get to a certain limit and you can't push anymore. And you start to tremble. But if you come back the next week, it's like you hit your limit and you go a little bit beyond it. Then you go to the next thing. Mm. It's like we get stretched. Yeah, we, 
I've always said it, human beings are the most beautiful machine, mm-hmm. right? And if we don't know how we work, we can get caught up in stuff like, you know, as um, being self-employed, what I've, what I focused on is teaching people how to create systems in their businesses so that they wouldn't forget to do something, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think like automation is just fantastic in a business. But what I didn't realize is that I brought automation to my life. That's interesting. What do you mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something ridiculous, but it's kind of like when I shower, you know, I know I have to wash my hair and I have to put, um, what's the word? Revitalizer, revitalizer. So, and the revitalizer, I have to leave it in for a certain amount of time for it to, you know, to work good with my hair. So I kind of like, I always, I will always wash my hair and put the revitalizer before I do anything else, because I don't want to spend too much time in the shower because I got to save money and I have to save energy and I have to save water. So I've put in a whole system, like I have this whole system in place to be able to be the most efficient. So this is the shower, right? <laughs> this is interesting. So this to me, Yasmin, this is what fascinates me. I think you see it. You see systems and structures effortlessly. Yeah. Like your soul, it's like what you see. That's your soul's, what are your soul's gifts? Yeah. It, like you, like you must see it and go, why can't, like we were talking earlier. Yeah. It, Oh yeah, we can systematize this. I I don't go there automatically. Yeah. But you know, I this got this came up because of habits. Like I realized that if I made a habit of something, I would never forget. So there were there were mistakes that occurred, you know, that came to my like I don't know, like for example, let's say taking your your vitamins in the morning, right? Well, I have a system for that. So I won't forget to take, <laughs> to take the vitamin, you know, like there's a whole system, wake up, got to do this, go do that, go that. Like, but here's what happens with that, right? Like, it's good. It's, I'm not saying it's bad, but I would forget that I was, I had put in that system. I would literally forget. So then I couldn't, like, I was stuck. At one point in my life, I was stuck. Like, I can say in my mid-20s, early 30s, I was stuck in my life because I had so many habits and systems. I was safe. I knew exactly how everything would work because I always took the right, the same way to go to work. I always took, ate the same thing in the morning. I always, you know, like I had everything down pat, but there was no fresh thinking around that. Mm -hmm. And then when fresh thinking, or it would diverge from the, the habit, then I'd suffer. Mm -hmm. Right. But it took me a while to see it. Like, I was kind of like, I don't understand. I'm doing everything right. (laughs) I made up everything that's right. It's so interesting. I'm like, I'm fascinated by this right now because there's power in what you're saying, like the systems and structures, because it's efficient. Yeah. And then at some point it becomes inefficient. It doesn't work anymore. Yep. So I'm wondering, how do you notice now to have structures, but also know how to remain open and when to change them? Presence. So say more. It's like when we can stay in the present moment Mm -hmm. and and not go into the auto mode, you know, right? So... Like I'm going to drive sometimes and I'm going to get the presence of mind. Like I, I still like to drive the same ways, you know, remember, you know, Michael tells us if if I show you this way, there's no traffic and this way, there's three hours, which way are you going to take? Well, I figure out my way and then I go that that way all the time. Pardon me. It's so interesting. But what I I'm curious about is energetically. How do you 
noticing that like the, the presence, noticing the difference between noticing presence versus automatic. Like that feeling difference. Because it could feel like you're present. Yeah. Because there's really power in it. Yeah. I can, I don't know how I do it, but, and I still get in my head and I still lose my presence. But how do you know when you're present? I got less on my mind. Uh, that's for sure. I feel there's a feeling in it, eh? Like right now in this conversation, there's a feeling in the conversation that is different than, because I right now I can hear my animals, right? And then my mind goes, where is she going? And, but I, I bring myself back instead of going, where is she going? And then being over there, having like the multitasking thing going. It's really interesting to see the, um, what presence is. Like I've said this word, you know, Oh, be present and like, you know, be, you know, be here now and blah, 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 blah. I don't think I've ever looked at, well, what is present and how do I know if I'm present? Like I've never, I've never thought that before. You no, know, we came out. Um, I did a coaching mastery. Did you do coaching mastery this weekend, this year? Well, I did. Uh, the, yeah. The. Oh, yeah, yeah, the three, yes, the three, yes. Yeah, we so we 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 did this class for those of you listening. We did this class with Michael. That's called Coaching Mastery. I've talked about it before. I think with Rob, um, and one day I I really came out of it with um, the thing that keeps coming. You know, when you see something fresh, like you see something newly. So I heard the. There's no past, there's no future, there's just now. And when I heard it, it, it was kind of like one of those HFMOGs moments that Michael has where I was just like, oh yeah, like the past is a memory. It comes from up here. It's stored thought, stored experience right and then there's the future which is imagined thought imagined experience it hasn't happened and then i saw and then there's now oh wow i'm just feeling it <laughs> I, and now is just the energy of the aliveness without all the thought yeah. Oh, wow. I just, I have tingles. Me too. Me too. I have tingles. <laughs> <pieces. laughs> I'm running up and down my, my body. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm wondering, um, it, it seems to me like What's possible is to have the structures, create the structures, but be present in this. Like, there is no structures. It's all made up. Like, it's yeah. made up thought. Oh, structures. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Structures don't exist. It's made up thought of patterns of behavior. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. It's like a prediction. It's like, okay, well, listen, when we sell a product, here's what happens when we sell a product. You put a price out. Okay, so you need pricing. You need somebody to order. So you need a structure to order. Somebody will order. You need to ship. Okay, good. Or do you need to deliver the product? Okay, the client's going to receive it. Is either going to be happy or he's going to be unhappy? Well, if he's happy, what do you do? This is what you do. If he's unhappy, this is what you do. Like, it's just all behavior. But then it happens. 
the client's unhappy. Okay, we'll have a conversation with you, with him. Like, like you know, I um, I can feel the presence is feeling the aliveness. And when I'm in my thinking, it's like, it's like the light goes down. It's like the pot, you know, like, it, it feels like when I'm present, the water's boiling, like it's a rapid boil on the stove. But when I'm caught in my thinking, it's just like, a, I don't, I don't feel that. I feel the low simmer. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, you, you know, you're the one who having a conversation with me that said the word expansion. And I see it more and more that when I'm in the presence, it's just expansive. It's like the energy, like I can feel it in my head. I can like, it's just like, it's like this, it's an open space of possibility. And as soon as you put thought into it, you kind of like, all of a sudden you're like, you know, like you, you just wrap yourself inside this yeah. thing where you get caught, you get caught. So it's cool to be able to create the possible stuff. Okay. Well, we know, we know the behaviors, you know, the, like we, we've all been buying and selling and we've all been doing the stuff that we're doing. Right. So if we just sit down and think about it, we can create a whole bunch of systems and structures and, and things like that. Oh, that's what also makes the dreams come true. Hmm. Tell me more. Well, you have a dream. You have something you want. And then there has to be an action or a structure or something to, that make it come alive. Yeah. And if you stay open, your dream might change. Might not, but it might change. Well, and I think that that's, I think, that's the thing about being listening to the energy or this intelligence. It seems to know where we're going. And what I've seen is when I listen to it, I'm pain free and it goes really well because I'm flowing with where life is going. But when it becomes painful, it's because I'm fighting life. Mm. Because the pain is there to tell me, hey, listen, you're not going where you're supposed to be going. Yeah. And I think that that's the beauty of dreams. I mean, I, I was talking to a client yesterday, and she had a horrible thing happen to her. I'm not going to go in there. But four or five years ago, she um, was in so much pain. And she was a doctor, and she was a neurologist. And she was at UCLA Medical or something like that, somewhere down south. And... It became this awful thing at work, awful. And she was in so much pain. And I knew there was a pony in the manure and um, she ended up not really loving the job. Like her friends had all betrayed her and she was miserable. And then she realized she really didn't love the job. It's not what she really wanted. She really wanted to be doing this other thing, this research. And, and, and then she really wanted to be closer to her family and she had a horse up here. Well, sure enough, she moved up here. She got the best job ever. She started writing again and she won some awards and then she also fell in love. But we think like life is wrong or something's wrong but we don't see that life is moving us somewhere. Yeah. That there's in this aliveness is this intelligence that's saying go here. Yeah, it's really... Uh... Yeah, because we know better, right? Well, we think we do, but we're not. Yeah. We're not listening to the little nudges. You know, the little turn right, the turn left, or look at this, or we don't feel the, um, the aliveness. We don't feel it. When we feel it, we can feel where it's going. Or we can feel what's, where, oops, hold, hold please, my dog yeah, is. Yeah. Um, we 
can feel what we're attracted to. What lights us up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we need to listen to. You know, it's funny because it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at right now. Like I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I really, lately I've had the insight that everything literally happens inside of me. Like every single thing that I experience is because it occurs inside of me. And I've been, you know, like, uh, like the dog bark, right? So what occurs inside of me is this should not happen, right? This, I'm recording a podcast right now. The dog shouldn't be barking. Um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> come on. <laughs> She's like, what, do you th- what did you say? <laughs> um, but it occurs inside of me. It's, it's not present for you. And it, it might be present for you, but that would still be occurring inside of you. Right. It's like the one that's barking in my mic. Yeah. <laughs> that yours is responding to. Yeah, exactly. That's what she's responding to. Come up. Come on, baby. Um, but I'm also, because I'm noticing this, because I'm noticing that everything occurs inside of me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to look at things that I like or that I love, you know, like I, I'm, I sang for many, many years and I had stopped singing and um, some, somebody invited me to some sing along and I said, okay. And I started singing again and I was like, yeah, I, I like that. And then I started looking at, I like, I like natural, I like natural stuff. So I started taking, you know, I'm doing my, um, my own products, my skincare products, taking care of my plants. I'm studying aquaponics. I'm like, I'm doing all this kind of stuff that I never knew I did that. I, you know, look, because I'm looking within and I'm noticing this. We feel what we love. What t- I, I, I walked into a store yesterday and um, I started weeping because it was so beautiful. It was like somebody had designed a store specifically for me because I knew I loved it. I don't have that reaction at Target. No offense to Target. I don't, I'm not saying it's wrong. It just doesn't light me up. So what's the biggest thing, like, I remember you coming into the, like, when we did the January intensive in Santa Monica, I I remember you walking into the class. I remember seeing you, you came in and you sat down and you were just laughing. You were just (laughs) laughing out loud. And I was like, who's this lady? Why is she laughing out loud? And, and I, I haven't, I, during the time that we did Super Coach Academy together, I haven't seen you cry. And we've been talking maybe for the past few months now. And I've seen you cry more in this, <laughs> this time because you're really touched, moved, and inspired by people. Right? Yeah. And I, yeah. So I'm wondering, oh, well, there's a dog outside. Is that it? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm wondering, is, is this new to you? Yeah, it's becoming, um, I, I, you know, I started this whole thing. My journey became, I couldn't feel anything. I didn't even used to laugh this hard. Like I was really shut down. Okay. Um, and somebody said, feel your feet on the ground and I couldn't feel. And it turns out there's a new book by Anita Marjani about empaths. Okay. I'm an empath. I feel everything deeply. My, when I was growing up, after my father died, the way we dealt with it is you don't cry. Like there was the rule that when my father died, nobody cried. Nobody talked about him. 
he died. It was like a goat, like nobody said his name. And if you're going to not cry or not feel, you have to shut everything down. Like, that's what I found. You, you, you can't, there's, I learned how to not feel anything. I mean, I could, somebody literally said, feel your feet on the ground. And it was like, somebody was talking like they were Mars or something like that. I was like, you know, one of those moments, like, what do you mean? You can feel your feet on the ground? Like, that was so radical to me. Mm. And the power is what we feel. Our, that energy is telling us something. And the more we don't have any thought and any more old blockings or stories about it, the energy just kind of moves through us. And it's so fun. And like I'm doing this uh, stretching thing and I'm just starting to sob because there's all this sobbing. Like it's how we release energy. But I could never do it because we weren't allowed to. It's like I can cut it off on that. So that was very observant. Then I am starting to cry. I'm being touched by life. It's beautiful. Life is. I love it. I love it. I love it. Good. When I see you cry, it makes me smile. And people are like, <laughs> and it's ridiculous, eh? but I like when I see people, and I remember where I was like, I didn't want to see people cry, but there's, I'm happy now when people cry because that means that they're feeling something that means that they're, and, and they're not used to that feeling. Like I get that when I start crying, there's a feeling that comes up in me that I'm so not used to it that my body just reacts to it. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. I've never heard that before that, that, a feeling your body is not used to. I never heard that. And that's what crying is. That's what it, my, that's what I made up, you know, like, cause that's what I noticed with me. Like it was kind of like, and I would resist, I would resist the crying. Like I didn't cry for a very long time. And, and then all of a sudden I started feeling, letting myself feel. And then I noticed that there are these emotions that when I first felt them, I would felt them, I would cry. Mm -hmm. And now I don't cry anymore. And then, and, and then I went into my head and I was like, oh, it must be because I'm unfeeling or la la la. And then I was like, no, I'm just used to it. Like before I would see somebody cry, I would cry because I was not used to the feeling that my body got when I saw somebody cry. Wow. Right now I don't cry. I, I'm actually touched, moved and inspired by somebody that cries that finally gets to touch that part. And, and then I just, just let them feel I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Cry, go do it. Feel it. It's so interesting. I love that. I love it. If, if I, I don't care if it's real or not. I yeah. love that made up version about crying, that it's um, something new coming through. Yeah. But actually, that, <laughs> I laugh when something, yeah. I, when I feel something new, I laugh a lot. Yeah. Or if I feel the truth. Yeah. And it's really, you know, it's funny because we, like I told you before, like when I read your, your bio, I was kind of like, wow, her and I were very similar. We kind of like, we have a similar path, except you have kids and I don't. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I could see. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> Are you, do you have clairvoyance? I've never thought about it. I you were about to say you could see and then you cut it off. And I'm curious, like you started to see something, you could see what? I think that it, it slipped away. Hmm. So, That's the part that I was wondering if you're clairvoyant and then you cut it off. Oh, it could be. I don't know. I remember one time I went to see years ago, I went to see a a psychic or a medium it was a medium and he told me that I was clairvoyant and I saw images yeah like it wasn't words I could see I could see images 
flowing in my mind. Yeah, that's what I just, I witnessed you. I just saw you see something. Yeah. But then you, it's like, uh, I don't know what happened. But energetically, like I saw you see something. It's like something was there that you were seeing, but you didn't connect to it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what it would be like to see that, to see you more. I don't know. I think that I'm, I'm listening more and more. I'm, I'm, I'm more present than I've ever been. And like one of the things that I was thinking about the other day is I really don't need language. Right. Like I can live my life without language, without word and just being in the feeling. Yeah, it's funny you say that. There, there, there's a guy who wrote, um, he does love poems, 30 word love poems a day. Okay. And um, there's this great poem. God, I'd love to read it. It's one of my favorite poems about what you're talking about. I'm going to pull it up. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, 30. Yep, 30, um, 30 words a day. Um, yeah, it's called The Quiet World by um, Jeffrey McDaniel. In an effort to get people to look into each other's eyes more and to also to appease the mutes, the government has decided to allow each person exactly 167 words per day. When the phone rings, I put it into my ear without saying hello. In the restaurant, I point at chicken noodle soup. I'm adjusting well to the new way. Late at night, I call my long distance lover, lover proudly say I only used 59 today. I saved the rest for you. When she doesn't respond, I know she's used up all her words. So I slowly whisper, I love you 32 and a third times. After that, we just sit on the line and listen to each other breathe. Mm -hmm. yeah Isn't that beautiful yeah so guys listen to each other breathe <laughs> <laughs> wow okay well Anna I think this is a perfect time to say thank you yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. And everybody else um, that's listening, I'm going to ask a question to Anna now that she has no idea what I'm uh, going to ask. So at the end of a podcast, and by the way, I totally forgot to put the, I have a segment inside my podcasts with Rob and Amy. I totally forgot to put the, the segment. So I'll put it at the end of this episode, because we're just going to close it up here. But uh, what I do is I ask my guests if they have, they would have a nugget of wisdom to leave our people with. Yeah, I think you said it. Listen, listen neutrally. Mm. Listen, listen to yourself and others from the feeling of love. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Anna. If people want to reach you, they do annascott.co. That's .com .co, guys. And um, I'm going to finish up with a segment of, um, of Eat the Way You Want, Just Eat with Amy, uh, something that we recorded a little earlier this month. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to tell everybody to uh, just dream it, dare it, do it, and live the life you want. Take care. Hi. Hello, everybody. Here's another segment of Eat What You Want with Amy Crippen. Hi, Amy. Hi. Amy, guess what? Spring is here. Yes. <laughs> it's so cool. I'm so I'm excited. So, yeah, me too. Me too. I have to admit. Um, and I feel like, you know, 
we're going to get out of the pandemic this year and I'm going to be able to go outside again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's not like I can't go outside, but it's like, you know, I'm not going outside. I did not. Uh, the winter was hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 My husband still like got dressed up and went outside and I was like, Ooh, have fun, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stay back yeah. and then I complain I'd be like I haven't gone anywhere I'd be like yeah. you could go for a walk <laughs> <laughs> um so listen uh with with Rob what we've been talking about is weight loss so about moving and weight loss and all of this so I thought hey Amy talk to me about weight loss and eating and all of that stuff like what what yeah just I I don't even know it uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's interesting because eating's the <laughs> eating's the common denominator to the weight gain and the weight loss, huh? <laughs> At least that's what people think. <laughs> it's like um and, and and it's so interesting how obsessed our society is yeah. with with weight loss, right? And um I first off want to really say that we can be healthy at every size. And um, there's so much of not just like the shape of our bodies, especially as women, that we get told and pigeonholed into of like how we're supposed to look. Um, but also, you know, the medical community. I'm a nurse, so I know this. You know, we get told like our BMI and this and that. And I got to tell you, BMI is a really shitty indicator of health. <laughs> so um, it, it doesn't. We've got, we got to be cognizant because there are other things. And like I said, when we're measuring like our energy, we're thinking, we're actually paying attention to how we feel and, um, and those sort of things, those are really good indicators that we, we are, we're doing good. Right. And so when it comes to weight loss, you know, um, it's usually this calculation, right? Like so many calories in and put so many calories out and you're very focused and you're doing this for a period of time to achieve a goal, a goal weight, right? And what typically happens is people rebound back into whatever habits they were doing before prior to, and then things go back on their body. But there is something that I, I feel is way more sustainable which is putting your mind on consistency, right? If you are showing up consistent, the law (laughs) of being consistent is results will come, right? So when you are not perfect, not being like all perfect about everything you eat and calculating everything, but really listening and attuning to your internal health values, right? Like, addressing what those are, addressing your body's needs, moving, doing things that feel good, it becomes really fun because it's not about things for other people or what you look like to other people. It's about you feeling good. Yeah. 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 There are things that, that we hear, like there are, like, I'll tell you one that I heard that's coming to mind. As you were talking, I was like, hydrate. Like, this was kind of like what showed up in my mind. It was like, hydrate. And and I, I, I before, in, in another life, <laughs> in another life, I was an Herbalife distributor, you know? And I, everybody's heard of Herbalife and, you know, they have this great shake and, you know, and I've, I've learned you know, how to do the Shakeology thing. Like you said the word Shakeology the other day and I, I liked it, so I'm using it. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, one of the best things that I've learned with this company is to hydrate, which I never really spent any time on. Um, but now I know when I, like I know today I didn't drink enough because I feel this dehydration in my mouth right? So I'm going to be downing some stuff (laughs) very shortly. Um, But like, I heard that even just 
hydrating well can help with weight loss. Hydrating well does help a lot with weight loss for a couple of reasons, you know, um, a lot of, we retain a lot of water weight and there's certain foods, you know, with high sodium, sodium will attract that water weight, you know, so it's interesting, you know, that when you, when you lose a lot of weight in the beginning of your <laughs> diet or your weight loss journey, a lot of that is water weight, you know, and, um, what does that and, mean, though? Like, I don't understand. What does that mean? Our body holds on to, um, yeah, to it's, water. So yeah. the water is heavy. I'm so, like, I'm just processing the information. Yeah. <laughs> so the water is heavy, so that gives weight. So when our body is made of a lot of water. So mm -hmm. when, we, when we lose the water weight because of salt... Yeah, we can retain a lot of water if we have high sodium diets. We can retain, so a lot of the oh. and bloating and stuff like that. Like typically you're kind of like shrinking the bloating and stuff in the beginning of a diet. Okay. You know, you haven't really lost fat around your muscles, around your organs. Which is what we're, this is ultimately, this is what we want to do, right? It's to the fat around our organs yes yeah yeah and um I mean I can't really speak to like how we know we're doing that or not <laughs> you know, like I can't see in there <laughs> so <laughs> but but um what I can speak on is that fat cells they've done studies so when we lose weight we don't lose the number of fat cells. So we're not like losing fat cells. Our fat cells shrink. So they become, they constrict and they become smaller. And then they're stored in our body, dormant for 10 years. Because <laughs> that's the length, that's the, how long fat cells stay in our body. For so 10, essentially, 10 years. 10 years they die. Yeah. Oh, okay. So essentially, so essentially like we have so many number of fat cells that our body has produced and those are just hanging out there in smaller, you know, like dormant states when we lose weight. So when, that's why consistency is so important. And that's why people rebound so easily because like you didn't lose, you yeah. lost weight, you know, but you still have the same number of fat cells waiting, you know, to like do what the body's designed to do, which is survive. And fat is a really, like, that's our way of storing nutrients for a time when maybe food isn't acceptable, you know, isn't ac access accessible. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's the word. So, so we're really like angry at our bodies for literally functioning the way that they're designed to function, you know? It's like, we're not all meant to be one size. We're not. And we don't, if, if we have to diet and consistently obsess over the, what we're eating to maintain a weight, I can guarantee you that's probably not a weight you're supposed to be. Yeah. 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 Cause it, it's, yeah, if we can like, that's, that's, that's what I want. <laughs> I, I just want to, you know, I don't want to think about it. I just want to be at the weight that I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. you know that's that's what I want I uh, I don't want to and I I definitely don't want to like one of the things that I've seen is that you know dessert used to be the exception I'm making up making it up because I don't really eat dessert but <laughs> you know there are some areas where there were things that were supposed to be an exception. Oh, I'm going to do this, you know, as, a, as an exception. But I turned it into a rule. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, I like maple peen, maple popcorn. By, by the way, guys, it's, it's sugar shack time. So I've got maple popcorn. Like, I like maple popcorn. Like, it's like, it should be in March. Like, maple popcorn should be in March. But if, there, if it was available... <laughs> If it was available year long, which I'm sure it is, but just not close to me, um, 
I would eat it all the time because I like I really <laughs> I really like it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, instead of making instead of instead of making exceptions, I make rules. Mm. Yeah, and that's kind of like no like that that's why I think um I'm trying to find the words for it but consistency right so if we are consistently eating the foods that we know aren't great for our body we do see the effects of it they're not not just the weight gain but like we were talking in the mental fog the heaviness the just like not feeling ourselves not feeling great you know there is a huge gut and mind connection you know, we have the brain gut connection um, where, I mean, this is more than just our hunger, but, you know, like the, we have different types of bacteria in our, in our bodies, right? And we're supposed to have that. It's great. It like fights off bad bacteria. And, you know, there's this whole world of like good bacteria in our gut. And we don't realize how when we're eating all this junk food, we're like feeding, feeding the bad bacteria, you know, and, and it, it does, it just, it, we feel way down and we really can trust. Um, we don't need to make something wrong about that. We just need to lean back into being consistent with the dense nutrition, being consistent with the things we do enjoy eating that, you know, and just, just being on a natural good flow, you know, with it. I think that if we if we realize that we are being consistent, mm-hmm. we're just being consistent consistent with what's not feeding us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there, that's what we're doing. We are being consistent. Exactly in the opposite direction that we want to go. Yeah, exactly. mm-hmm. which yeah. which reminds me, we had a conversation about probiotic mm-hmm. off camera. Uh, a little while ago and you like probiotics because of that right because they they clean up the bad bacteria yeah pro uh pro and prebiotics um so i can't think of all the foods necessarily off the top of my head i mean a lot of prebiotics are found in like mushrooms and greens like leafy greens and like dark leafy greens like like collard greens and Swiss chard and kale and stuff like that. Um, And a lot, there's a lot of probiotics in um, things like dairy, some dairy has it. So yogurt and um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I mean, you can take a capsule, you know, um, as well, but I, I try to just kind of have a balance of that, you know, in my diet too, you know, um, of getting those types of things. And it really does, uh, I, I notice a difference, you know, so I notice a difference with, um, usually I, f- I feel like I just notice a difference with like my energy and just like the my the way my digestion feels you know like there's a difference we can feel a difference when we eat a really heavy meal versus something that's like satisfying us you know well you know last year I did go to I went to the hospital I I had I had heart I'm guessing it was heartburn but it was the first time that I had it where I it was really hurting or or gastric whatever what's that like Baird's esophagus gastric reflux GERD yeah okay so I I, like and it was the first time like I usually just drink a glass of water and it passes and and now it wasn't passing you know so I kind of I went I I called because I was also having a pain in my arm or where wherever I I kind of like started freaking out and I said maybe I'm having a heart attack why would I have a heart attack I didn't know but you know I did turn 51 this year and I was like well maybe I should start look thinking about that because I just don't think about that you know like as in my heart I'm 28 you know what I mean yes <laughs> so um so I kind of called uh, the we have a, a, a line here that we can call basically speak to a nurse and, and I was she was asking me all these questions and she was like 
well, I really think he should go to the hospital. I'm going to send the ambulance. And I'm like, no, you're not going to send the ambulance. There ain't no way. I'm going to go. I'll go myself, you know. <laughs> and uh, so finally somebody drove me. I, I didn't drive. Okay. Okay. I was I like, <laughs> yeah, we're talking off camera going. about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the nurse is going, what, what did you do? No, no. I called somebody. I was built, but I wasn't going to take the ambulance and get the bill for the ambulance. And I just like, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. And it was good because when I got there, they did all the tests and, but I haven't ever since I've been, and I'm telling you, I think it was like April or May last year. I think it's been a year and I haven't had acid reflux or GERD since. And I haven't taken, like they gave me a prescription for Pantaloc and I didn't fill it. I didn't do it, but I haven't had anything since then. That's and, good. And I, and I see that I have changed I have changed things. Like I'm starting to notice, okay, well, when I eat that, I just don't feel good after. Like, mm -hmm. why would I keep doing that? Mm -hmm. You know? So I'm, I'm more and more, I'm, I'm very consistent with hearing that. Yeah. Hearing you're that voice. You're listening to your intuitive eater you know, and, and your own wisdom. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's what I tell people, you know, just look within, listen to what's going on inside and hear. And, and I, I know that in the beginning, it, it kind of gets confusing because we're so used to creating and we're so used to, to making shit up <laughs> that listening in becomes a little like, well, is that my wisdom or is that my head? But eventually you'll get it. There's going to be a different feeling, mm -hmm. a different feel to it. Mm -hmm. you know, one of them, you're going to kind of, at one point, you're going to kind of see the difference and kind of go, yeah, Billy, <laughs> you know, the, I, I want candy. Yeah, really? You know, mm -hmm. you're going to start seeing the difference. Mm-hmm. You will. Yeah. You'll notice it and you'll notice how our bodies are always guiding us towards like uh, towards alignment, you know, towards equilibrium. The body's job is to keep you at a state of well-being, you know. So what would be the, the, the one thing that you would tell, you know, anybody that's wanting to lose weight because it's spring right now? Well, mm. what, 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 what is the, the thing you would want them to, to know? Yeah, the, you know, summer bodies are made in winter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first off, I think the very first step towards any weight loss journey is really loving and accepting your body as it is. You know, because this is it. This is, this is all I got right here. This body, I have one body. I'm not going to disrespect it with all of that bullshit that everybody else thinks that it should be. I'm really happy with this body, you know? So I think the first thing is, is, is honoring that space and it's okay. Like sometimes I get, you know, sometimes I, you know, sometimes I gain weight in a way where I like, you know, maybe didn't listen to my wisdom enough <laughs> and knowingly I was like, I'm going to eat these nachos anyways, wisdom, <laughs> like mm -hmm. I want them, <laughs> you know, so, and, you know, maybe did that too often and then I'm like, ah, you know, but I, it comes from like a very effortless space. I don't know how to explain it other than it feels effortless. It feels like a nudge that's like, hey, start getting more active. Hey, start eating better. And then I just follow it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a self-judgment voice. It doesn't feel like I'm doing it for somebody else. It feels like I'm doing it for myself. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, we think that self-judgment is useful, but it's really, really, in French, we have the word nifas, but it's, it's really damaging self self judgment is so damaging to us and yet we keep doing it thinking innocently that hey if we do it 
we're not going to do this again, right? Or like, but the like for me, I'm talking for myself. Inevitably, self judgment is going to bring me to give up anything that I'm doing. Anything. Yep. Yeah. It's inevitable. It's when I start there, when I start doing it, I'm going towards failure. Yeah, there's a, there definitely is a difference between the inner critic and like that voice of reason, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes we're off on our habits. Sometimes we're off on our behaviors. And I think there is something within us that kind of goes, that wants the best for us. And, and it, it's really coming from a space of love. It's not coming from a space of judgment. Mm. Just kind of noticed you've been eating maple popcorn for the last six weeks. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's time for time, time to stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Amy, thank you very much. Looking forward to our next our next clip where you know season two is almost over right oh my gosh yeah so people if you like these clips please tell us you know amy and i are looking forward to hearing you know what you thought of them we we'd love to hear it then make sure that you follow her you're gonna see her link in the description and uh yeah that's it thank you all right thank you Bye. bye